God takes forgiveness very seriously. And, um, and so it's, it is a serious subject. And so let's jump into Matthew chapter 18. If you have your Bibles, your phones, whatever you have there. And uh, we'll jump in. So Matthew chapter 18, beginning in verse 21. This is the parable of the unmerciful servant. It says, Then Peter came to Jesus and he asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Like, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty awesome. I'll forgive you seven times, right? Jesus is like, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Now, some translations, usually the old English will say 70 times seven. Uh, some people view that as a mathematical equation, as if 70 multiplied by 70 was 4 to 90. Given the context of the old English, it's more likely read something like, you know, like Abraham Lincoln's four score and seven years ago was an addition thing. Don't get hung up on that part when we're reading through this translation. It says 77 times. Like, I thought it was 490. It's not the, it's, it's a metaphor. The point is you forgive indefinitely. You just keep forgiving as many times as, as you've been, as you've been uh, wrong. In verse 23, it says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like, I love Jesus. I just all the time telling stories. Like, I ask a question. It's like, okay, here's the answer. But let me tell you this story. <laughs> Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Some translations will call this a talent. And so uh, he, that man was brought to him. Verse 25 says, uh, since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, and he canceled the debt and let him go. I mean, it's pretty awesome. He just canceled it. It wasn't like, okay, I'll let you go, pay me back. He canceled the debt. Verse 28. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. And he said, pay me back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, and I'll pay you back. Same terminology, same language. But he refused. Instead, he went off and he had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and they went and told their master everything that had happened. And then the master called the servant in and he said, you wicked servant, I canceled all of your debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? And in anger, the master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until the day, until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you. Unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Amen. <laughs> we can stop right there. It's heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. Some translations, again, will call that to the bags of gold and call it a talent. The NIV changed it to bags of gold just because that makes more sense in our head. And so he said that he owed 10,000 talents of gold or bags of gold. The commentary on this that I was reading said that one talent, I don't know if you know this, one talent was worth about 20 years of a day laborer's wage. So this guy, we had the math. I got some equations. I can't remember what's next. Okay, so ten thousand talents times twenty years. Two. This guy owed two hundred thousand years worth of work. He said, "I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back." I said, "I'll just cancel it because you're not going to pay me back." Two hundred thousand years of work. I was reading about the talents. Says when used as a measure of money, it refers to a talent weight of gold or silver. The gold talent is reported as weighing roughly the same as a person. Some authorities say that the talent typically weighed about 75 pounds. In June of 2018, the international price of gold was about $41,155 and some cents per kilogram. At this price, the talent, which would be 33 kilograms, would be worth, the talent would be worth in 2018, $1,400,116.57. Okay, so I got my calculator out. I was saying, okay, so how much is this? And I just, I just, I carved off the cents, and I said 1.4 million times 10,000. Anybody, any, any idea, guess what that means? About 14 billion. Well, how much? You think it's a trillion? Who says it's a trillion? Is the answer up there? Don't put the answer up there. Go slow. I'll just show you the answer. Okay, go ahead, show us quickly. 1.4 to the Okay, so, so this is, I pulled it up on my phone and I said, all right, I don't know if this is, so I'm going to show you some dialogue between me and my son. I, I texted him back and forth. So I texted Aiden and I said, what does this mean? He says, it's 1.4 of the natural law to the 10th power. And I was like, oh, perfect. It makes a lot of sense. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. To which I said, no idea what that means. 
And so we're, we're just going back and forth. You know, I, I copied Katie in it because she's pretty smart too. And uh, she's just going, ha ha, ha ha, in her text message. Too. <laughs> I think because she didn't know either. She was going to make this too. <laughs> to which Adrian said this it gives you a scientific notion, uh, notation because it's just too big. And so then Adrian gets out his real calculator, his scientific college thing, you know. I took business math, like, what's four plus four times, you know, how you, how you pay taxes, stuff like that. But he knows this stuff. So he says, oh, go back one slide. Oh, yeah, I saw it still here. So I love how he says, it, this is a direct quote. It gives you a scientific notation because it's too big. So anyway, math is his thing. English is not, I guess. No it was a bad joke. I'm oh, sorry. If you paint more talents, the jokes will be better. I just get it worse. Isn't it? Okay. They have a stand-up comedy uh, um, category at Fine Arts. I'm too old, first of all. But listen, when you hear a middle schooler do stand-up comedy, it sounds a lot like me. So, um, so. Adrian gets out his real calculator, he says to me, he's like, dude, that's not even the right answer. He says me this thing or whatever. The point is, this man owed a debt that's so big that it could never be repaid. 200,000 years of work is what he owed this guy. So then he's walking down the street and he runs into somebody who owes him some money. 100 silver coins or 100 denarii. So this is the equivalent of 100 days wages. This guy owes 200,000 years of work. He runs into somebody who owes him 100 days worth of work. And so for the sake of discussion, let's say that this guy was middle class and he made 60,000 a year. Sorry for all the math digress here. <laughs> so $60,000 a year divided by, let's say 260 working days. That could be off. I don't know. So this guy makes about $230 a day. Not a terrible living. $230 a day times 100 days is what he owes the guy. $23,000. So you're telling me that a guy that owed 1.4 times 10 to the 10th power, the guy who owned or owed an amount so high there's not even an actual number for it, you have to use scientific notations to explain it. The guy who owed 200,000 years worth of daily wages would not forgive a guy who owed him 100 days worth of work. This is barely over three months worth of work. The point is, is that we owe a debt that we cannot pay. It's far too great. And there is nothing that we can do to ever pay back what we owe. The master, our father, God says, I'll forgive your debt through the person of my son, Jesus Christ. But there's a condition. We must also forgive others. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer, a very popular passage of scripture. We see this before even, this is before Matthew 18, obviously. He says, this is how you should pray, O Father in heaven, how it be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our debts, for we also forgive as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And listen to these words from Jesus. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. <laughs> what commentary do we need on this? Like, and it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just trying to make light of it because it's so heavy. There's a condition. I'll cancel your debt. You also cancel the debt of others. Let's continue Matthew 18, 32. Then the master called his servant. Said, you wicked servant, he said, I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat you unless you forgive your brother or sister in your heart. Verse 34, he handed him over to the jailers to be tortured. See, a lot of times we think, and when I read this, I'm the same way. A lot of times I think this is a metaphor for the afterlife. As if to say that we'll be tortured in hell beyond this life. And I'm not saying that that's not part of it. But I was listening to somebody the other day talk about the subject. And he brought in something that I was like, oh, I never thought of it that way. But there's an element of the torture that happens in this life. Because when we walk in unforgiveness and hold bitterness in our hearts, it's like torturing ourselves. So I'm going to give you a few things that unforgiveness causes in our lives. And you'll see kind of how it's torturing our lives. First of all, it causes health problems. Like your physical body. So unforgiveness in your heart will cause health problems. Did you know that having unforgiveness would actually create health problems in your, in your body? 
This is from a non-Christian website. I was just reading some stuff about it. It says unforgiveness may be affecting your physical health. The good news, studies have found that, they, that an act of forgiveness can reap huge rewards for your health, lowering the risk of heart attack, improving cholesterol levels in sleep, reducing pain, blood pressure, and levels of anxiety, depression, and stress. And research points to an increase in the forgiveness health connection as you age. See, there's some of us that are that are that are experiencing medical issues because we just, we're choosing not to forgive people. And it progresses with age. It's, their study shows that basically the older we get, the more that forgiveness and, and, uh, and our health is, is closer, closer related. I want to move to this kind of quickly. The second thing that causes is emotional problems. Why? Because our emotions really have a limited amount of energy. You ever just been emotionally exhausted? That's what unforgiveness and anger does. Anger and unforgiveness are like putting our emotions on a treadmill. Anger and unforgiveness are really some of the largest consumers of our emotional energy. You ever had a situation where you find you feel good or whatever, and then you just you get into a fight, and it's it's quick, it's over over quick. Your adrenaline kicks in, and you're so angry. But as soon as that's over, you feel completely exhausted. It's because anger can step in where and other other emotions like laughter, right? Laughter brings energy. Right? You may be tired physically, but it brings energy to you emotionally, it puts you in a good mood. But anger and unforgiveness and when those things when they when they flare up like that, you're instantly just gone. Why? Because it sucks the life out of your emotional capacity. We only have so much to go around. And so when we are living in a state of unforgiveness, it causes those kinds of emotional problems. We have to forgive people and let stuff go. It's not worth the emotional turmoil that it puts us through. I mean, if you care about yourself, forgive people so that you can be free. Number three, it causes spiritual problems. I mean, when we choose not to forgive, it opens the door for demonic activity in our lives. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, again, a very popular passage of scripture from a letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesian church. He said, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. The word devil there is translated in the Greek as diablos. I don't know if you know this or not, but it means prone to slander, slander, or so accusing falsely. So when we take our anger and unforgiveness to bed with us, it gives the enemy an opportunity to whisper slander in our ear all night long. This is why we're supposed to deal with our issues before the sun goes down. Don't allow the enemy the opportunity to slander others or even yourself. Forgive yourself, forgive others, so that when you go to bed, I mean, you ever, you ever go to bed mad at somebody you wake up even worse? And you feel like you just replayed the thing in your mind all night long while you were sleeping? That's because you have. The enemy was whispering, yeah, you're right, you did this, you did that. It's whispering in your ears, it's demonic activity. And when we don't forgive, it opens the door for that to happen. God takes forgiveness very seriously, and so, so should we. So what does it mean to forgive? I'll give you a few things. Again, I know this is kind of list-oriented, not normally how, how I would present. So number one, it means forgiving the debt and bringing the balance to zero. Just letting it go. Number two, it means to permanently forfeit the right to get back at them. And I don't, listen, I'm not saying it's easy. Especially when somebody's wronged you in a very, very deep level. But true forgiveness means forfeiting the right to get back at them. It means permanently forfeiting all expressions of judgment. You let them go. See, when we continuously talk about people, how they've hurt us, what they've done to us, that's not forgiveness. And it's like a fire. As fire starts to dry out, and just it starts to go out, you just stir the coals, and it just it just comes back up, right? We deal with that all the time. You gotta put you gotta put that those embers out. He was telling me the other day, we were talking about fires. He's like, you know, one of the most embarrassing things as a, uh, I don't know, what do you call yourself? Rekindle. A rekindle. So it's just they go to a fire. If they don't get all of it out, they'll go, they'll think everything's done. They'll go back to the station, and then the, the embers will start again. And then they have to come back again and repeat the whole process because they didn't do it the right way. So we forgive people mentally, and we forgive them, I'll forgive you, it's no problem, or whatever. And then, but we don't do it in our heart, which is what, we'll get to that in a second, at the end of the, uh, Matthew 18, he says to forgive with your heart. But when we continue to talk about it, it's like rekindling those embers, and it causes the fire to start up again. So as I said many times, I don't know where this quote came from, but hurt people hurt people. And so when you're hurt because someone's wounded you, that's spilling out on other people. And when we see someone that's, that's, who's hurt, uh, we see them for what they've done to us, 
or someone who's hurt us. When someone hurts, uh, hurts us, we view them as because of what they've done to us. But God sees them for what's been done to them. He's looking at them going, hey, they've been hurt too. It's hard for us to wrap our mind around this. But listen to this. Hear what I'm saying. God loves the offender as much as he loves us. That's tough. It's hard for our minds to wrap, that, wrap around. I was watching a video. I thought about playing. It's just kind of too long. We had a long weekend. I didn't have time to edit it and, and put the pieces together. But a couple years ago, I was at 15 when the guy went to South Carolina into the church and, and killed all the worshipers on Wednesday night. I don't know how many people died. You might remember the specifics on the story. But you know the story, right? Yeah. He goes into a predominantly African-American church, white kid, and just kills a bunch of people. Well, at his arraignment or wherever it was, the judge was there. They were about to present, you know, the sentence or whatever. I think they were setting bail. I don't know. Maybe it was his first appearance or whatever. I'm not so sure what's going on. But these people that have been affected and that have lost sons and daughters and grandmothers and kids and all this stuff, they uh, they went in and they said, do you have anything you want to say to him? And one by one, they said, you've taken everything from me. You know, one lady said, every fiber of my being hurts that I forgive you. And one, like, you should go YouTube this video. It's unbelievable. These people lost loved ones because of a random act of terrorism or hate. And one by one, they said, I forgive you. One guy said, listen, turn to Jesus. and He'll change your heart from where you are today. and You'll be much better now, better off. I forgive you. They're releasing it. This is, unforgiveness doesn't mean there's no, or, or forgiving someone doesn't mean there's no consequences. You know what I mean? It doesn't, but the, the consequences, that's not our responsibility. That's God's. Amen. We want to hold. We want to play God and say, "Well, you did this to me. We can do this to you." Yeah. That's not. That's not our job. In Romans twelve seventeen. Paul said it this way: Do not repeat, repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what's right in the eyes of, the, uh, of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, written that it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. We, again, I don't know, I should just read the scriptures and just pray and let us go. But what I'm trying to say, we just have to stop taking it ourselves. It's not our job. Amen. What does Jesus say about treating those who mistreat us? Luke 6, 27, 28, he says, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. I mean, you put all these unforgiving, put all this stuff together, and it's just one punch in the face. Uh, you know, I'm sorry about that, but sometimes we need to, it just goes with where we are. Amen. This is part of having a healthy soul. And I know that not everybody in your struggles with that. You're like, I'm not mad at anybody. I don't hold a grudge. I, I, this is not a struggle of mine. Katie can attest to this. I don't, and I'm not saying I would never would. I'm not capable of it. Just thankfully, for whatever reason, the way I'm wired, I'm very forgiving. And people, maybe I just haven't been wronged deeply enough. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, we don't know. If you had done to you, you would have done to me. Listen, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to compare stories. But just thankfully, I'm not in that space. And I know there are probably others in the room that you're just like, hey, it's okay. Just let things go. And you don't, you truly don't harbor unforgiveness. I understand that not everybody in the room is dealing with this. But there are people in the room that are. And it's affecting your soul. It could be affecting your health. You may be experiencing health issues because you're just holding all this stuff in. It's the, even some stuff we didn't talk about. Ulcers and all the stuff that comes from holding unforgiveness inside of our hearts. Jesus said to love your enemies, to do good to those, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Again, as I said earlier, God takes you to this very seriously in social media. I'm almost done. Here's some quotes, and all this, all, all this information isn't for me. It just came from some of my study. But Jimmy Evans says this. He's a pastor um, in Louisville, Texas. He says, if we can't bless them, then we haven't forgiven them. So maybe that's a litmus test for us. If you can't bless them, then you haven't forgiven. Here's what blessing them does. Blessing forces forgiveness out of our head and into our heart. And that's why Jesus said to bless them and to pray for them. I mean, think of the person who's hurt you the most. What would it be like to begin to pray for them? What would it be like to bless them? At first, I bet you'd hate it. 
is actually, and I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not blessing them. But if we'll be faithful to do what Jesus said, it will force the forgiveness from our head to our heart. I mean, how many, how many times do we do things that we don't want to do because we know that the end result, you know what I mean? Like, I don't go to the gym, obviously. But you go to the gym, you don't like it, but you do it to get the results. Some of you are eating healthy. You don't see, some of you may really like it. So you just weird like that. But <laughs> bring on the cheese dip fries, you know what I mean? <laughs> Bacon. Pastor Eddie asked me in the hotel, he's like, how many sodas do you drink a day? First of all, he was drinking a Coke when he asked me. <laughs> yeah, you were. You opened up a Coke. I said, ain't you going to drink water? And he said, I'm going to have a Coke. And then I had a Mountain Dew. And he said, how many, Mount, how many, how many sodas do you drink a day? And I said, mind your own business so you have a pillow over your face tonight. <laughs> so she said, I'm in the Puerto Rican Mafia. I'll have you killed right now. <laughs> Sorry, can we edit that out of the live feed? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. Just trying to lighten the mood, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> what would it be like to bless those who've heard us the most? The doing it by faith, again, will force Force it from your head to your heart. It's not about do you want to. Like I, I know you don't. It, part of you doesn't want to, but the, the real you is crying out, saying, "The spirit on the inside of you is crying out, saying, release them, forgive them.'" And it may start with, you know, maybe it's maybe it's a father wound. Maybe you've been wounded by your dad. And it may start with, God, I don't want to do this. My dad's really hurt me. I ain't know where to start. To be honest, this, this is how I pray. Of course, you know my dad. I told stories about him. I love my dad. I have a great, I have a great relationship with my dad. He's been there to help. This is what I would do. If I were talking to God and I had an issue with my dad, I would tell him that. I'd say, God, uh, I don't really want to do this. Everything in me says not to do it. But I want to speak this out by faith. Believe in something that I can't see. And I'm just going to start taking baby steps. And I'm going to ask you to take this from me. And I would just say, God, this next words that I say, I'm saying by faith. And I give it to you. And I would just say, God, I forgive my dad. And I bless him today. Whatever he's doing, wherever he is. And then you, 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 I'd just be done. But you, a, a repetitive step of that over and over again in faith will release something from your head into your heart until finally, one day, I believe you'll say, I bless him and I release him and it'll mean something and you'll feel it and it'll just be gone. That's the power of doing what the Word of God says. What did he say in Matthew 18 at the end, verse 35? This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. I don't know about you, but I want to be released from the burden of unforgiveness. I want to be released from the physical, emotional, and spiritual turmoil that I'm putting myself through. I want to be healed from the inside out. I mean, how many of you want to be healed? Do you want to be whole? This message can go, can go on and on. Let me circle back around and say this. If we're going to be healthy, if we're going to have a healthy soul, then we must learn to forgive. Listen, again, I know that what I'm saying has is, is, is been kind of heavy, but listen to this. All right, these last couple statements. If we choose not to forgive, we are willfully choosing to sin. When you choose not to let it go, you're willfully choosing to sin. It's no different than, than pulling something up on the computer than looking at something that you shouldn't. It's no different than, than any sin that you would choose to do. Overindulgence of, of whatever, of drug addiction, alcoholism, Whatever the situation is, we have all these categories of things where we say, well, if you do this, then this is a big sin. This is kind of, this is okay. You can tell a lie sometimes as long as it's as long as you're cheating the government and not your friend. Right? We have all these categories. But when we say, I'm not gonna forgive, I'm not, he's done too much, she's done too much to me, I can't do it. You're choosing, you're willfully choosing to live in sin. 
A second ago, I asked us how many of us want to be healed. Of course, all of us do. We want to be healed. Listen to this statement, all right? Listen to this. If we won't forgive, we won't be healed. It's that simple. If we won't forgive, we won't be healed. And we must do it from our heart. That's what Jesus said. You mean I have to forgive my ex after all the things they did to me? If you want your sins forgiven, you do. If you want to be healed from that pain, you do. You may have to forgive my mother, my father, my family member that abused me sexually. They beat me. They cursed me. They did. If you want to be healed, you do. If you want your sins forgiven, you do. So there's some people in the room that are tortured with so much about forgiveness. Your heart, and, and your heart, you're holding in your heart towards someone who's not even alive anymore. People who passed away, they're gone. They're gone. And we're still on the earth going, I hate you for what you did to me. I hate you because of this. I hate you because of that. They're not, they're not even here. Who's being tortured? We are. We're the ones that are being tortured. wants us to be healed. He wants us to be free. I was kind of a little bit of a different different kind of message. But as far as the delivery style, and maybe again, I know it feels kind of heavy in here. But this is not a minimization of, of you, of what's happened to you or to, to me. Some of us have been wounded deeply. I get that. Some people are easily offended. That's no matter what you say. I mean, churches are notorious for it. People quit the church because the pastor didn't shake their hand. You know, people quit the church because the pastor wore flip flops. Uh -oh. Dude, get over yourself. Calm down. But other people in the room have had some serious things that have happened to you. I get that. And I don't want to minimize that. But we have to release those things. We have to release them. Because if we don't, we'll never be healed. Will never be whole. Our soul will never be healthy.